Okay, I'm going to raise the decibel level. I want to thank you for joining us this evening. I'm Leaves Whitney, Director of the Hallenstein Center for Presidential Studies here at Grand Valley. And your host uh, this evening, and I'm very, I'm very proud to be your host. It's a very special conference that we have, and uh, just absolutely delighted with the people who have agreed to come to Grand Rapids and participate in this conference. Also want to acknowledge at this point our thanks to the Gerald R. Ford Presidential Library and Museum and the Ford Foundation for co-hosting this with us. We're very proud to be their partners as always. They always provide wonderful support to us, moral support as well as uh, other kinds of uh, material support so that we can put on great programs here in West Michigan together. So we appreciate the Ford. Uh, John, thank you very much. I see you're here to represent the Ford. Thank you. Well, uh, the title of this conference, as you know, is Bush Legacy and Lessons. You've probably seen maybe the ad in the newspaper. What citizens and the next president need to know. You know, lessons are always a funny thing. It makes me think a little bit of the, uh, the AA meeting where there was an old preacher who was running the meeting and he wanted to make a point. So he held up a glass of gin and he dangled a live worm over that glass of gin, dropped that worm in, held the, the glass high for everybody to see, and the worm, of course, sort of writhed and died in just a second. Now, the old preacher said, what's the lesson? And a guy in the back of the room said, if you drink gin, you won't get worms. <laughs> We have to be careful about the lessons, and I'm sure there will be many from our uh, distinguished uh, folks who are here with us uh, tonight will be presenting tomorrow. And before I introduce tonight's speaker, I would like for the people who will be speaking tomorrow, please to stand so that we can acknowledge you. Do we have a little preview? Please stand up. Okay, we've got folks there. There should be about 10 of you standing. All right. Very good. Let's give these folks a hand. It is now my honor and my pleasure to introduce tonight's speaker. Rufus Spears is the David Ross Boyd Professor of Classics at the University of Oklahoma, where he holds the G.T. and Libby Blankenship Chair in the History of Liberty. He also serves as the David and Ann Brown Distinguished Fellow of the Oklahoma Council of Public Affairs. He rose from Assistant Professor to Professor of History at Indiana University and was chosen Indiana University's first distinguished faculty research lecturer. From 1986 to 1990, he was professor of classical studies and chairman of the Department of Classical Studies at Boston University. He is currently the David and Ann Brown Distinguished Fellow of the Oklahoma Council of Public Affairs. Professor Fears received his PhD from Harvard and is an internationally distinguished scholar and author of numerous studies in Greek and Roman history, the history of freedom, and the lessons of history for our own day. Many volumes he's written about Roman history, and he's edited a three-volume edition of the Selected Writings of Lord Acton, a magisterial uh, resource. Professor Fears has been a Danforth Fellow, a Woodrow Wilson Fellow, a Harvard Prize Fellow. He's been a Fellow of the American Academy in Rome, a Guggenheim Fellow, and twice a Fellow of the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation in Germany. His research has been supported by grants from the American Council of Learned Societies, the American Philosophical Society, the National Endowment for the Humanities, the Zorro Foundation, the Kerr Foundation. By my count, Professor Fears has received some 50 distinguished teaching awards, 24 of them recognized for outstanding teacher excellence. 1996, 1999, and again in 2000, students chose Professor Fears as University of Oklahoma Professor of the Year. 2005, he received the National Award for Teaching Excellence, which cited his outstanding teaching, teaching and contribution to continuing higher education. He was the recipient of the Excellence in Teaching Award from the Classical Association of the Middle West and South. In 2005, students at OU named him Most Inspiring Professor. Are you guys getting the picture? <laughs> in 2006, the statewide Oklahoma Foundation for Excellence awarded him its Medal for Excellence in College and University Teaching. Professor Fears is active in speaking to broader audiences as well. His comments on the lessons of history for today 
have appeared on television and newspapers across the United States. He is a regular guest on national talk radio programs, and each year, this sounds particularly delightful, he leads study trips to historical sites in Europe and throughout the United States. Well, we're delighted that his travels have brought him to Grand Rapids. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Professor Rufus Spears. Thank you for such a lovely introduction. I'm just going to stand down here if that's okay. Is that all right with you, yes or no? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Good. Because it's my very great pleasure to be here. Uh, I've never been to Grand Rapids before, and it's a beautiful city. And I have been much taken with uh, Grand Valley State. In fact, I think my little girl should come here. She's 17 now. And uh, I've also been so impressed with the work that's going on at the center. It is work of fundamental importance at a critical moment in our country's history. In fact, one of the most critical moments we have had since, I believe, Pearl Harbor. And I'm so pleased that Mrs. Kirk is here. Uh, Russell Kirk shaped my life, I think without his ever knowing it. But I was an assistant professor at Indiana and uh, quite determined to spend my life in the most important of all research, which was on the ruler cult in ancient Rome and determining whether or not the Romans really believed their emperor was a god or not. And that's what I was going to do. Then I heard him lecture on the philosophical historian. And from then on, I realized there was more you could do in life, and that actually you could grow intellectually and spiritually and morally. So I'm so pleased she is here as well. I believe that the founders of our country and the founding presidents of our country, George Washington and John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison and James Monroe would all have approved of having a conference about the legacy of a president that tried to learn lessons from Rome. Their own lives were shaped by Rome. George Washington consciously took the model of Cincinnatus, the Roman leader who at a critical moment in his country's history put aside his plow led the Romans to victory, and then returned to his life as a founder, as a farmer. John Adams, at a critical time that the Constitution was being debated, wrote his book on a defense of the constitutions of government of the United States to use the Roman balanced Constitution as the model for a Republican constitution devoted to freedom. Thomas Jefferson's most enduring Concrete legacy is Monticello, which he modeled on the Pantheon in Rome in his belief that the buildings of Greece and Rome were the most suitable instruments to house Republican government in a new world. James Madison spent the critical winter of 1786 and 1787 studying the Roman historian Polybius in order to find a guide for the new constitution and in his late years, James Monroe was writing a book for the American people to explain to them the lessons of the ancient world. The founders believed that the study of Greece and Rome is the most important single subject for all citizens of a free republic. Now, you should be a doctor, you should be a lawyer, you should study commerce, but all of us should understand the lessons of the classical past. I want you to ponder the achievements of the founders of our country. They declared their independence from the superpower of the day, correct? Great Britain. And they declared it on the basis of fundamental principles. Have you ever considered that the United States is the only nation in history founded on principles? How do you get to be a German? German will still tell you today it's, you speak German as your mother tongue. So Italian will tell you the same thing. 1776, you were British because you were born there. It was a geographical accident. But we founded our nation on the principles of all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with the unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Words that come directly from Greek philosophers and Roman law. 